I'm Harley Kaplan, um, cast and director, uh, in the middle of a million projects right now. I'm actually finishing a film for Donna Vermeer that was shot in Paris um, called Robbery on the Champs-Élysées. And also I'm looking at a lot of uh, bigger actors on Broadway. We also started a commercial division really recently. We recently had um, the comedy at Sundance in competition. We also have another film coming out at Tribeca Film Festival this month called Jack and Diane. I, I love independent films. There's so much more creativity. Um, the actors are allowed to improvise. It's nice, it's not Shakespeare, it's not a commercial, it's not a soap opera. I mean, a script could be 78 pages and the film could be three hours, or op the opposite. They really let the actors um, improvise and it's so much more organic. And I just, I, I like it, there's the freedom there, rather than doing a studio film where um, everything is about the budget and the effects and all these uh, demands from not just the actors, but sort of everybody involved. It basically starts with getting a, a script sent to you um, by either a producer, a director, a writer, and it, it usually starts with um, realistically figuring out with this budget, with this script, with the pedigree that comes behind it, um, who you could get, you know, that would be best for this role, like who would mean the most in terms of um, sales and and distribution and also um, um, well, but I also like to cast the best actors I like uh, um, and but anyway so it starts with that and I, I usually put lists together I break all the characters down and put names and all, not just names that are big but names that of actors I think are just fantastic I go to a lot of showcases and I teach three places okay. um, seminars and so I get to see a lot of actors that I wouldn't normally see um, uh, at that point, the, everyone will agree on, uh, the director, producers, whatever, will agree on the um, financiers, on the cast. Um, we'll make some offers and then we'll um, release these breakdowns of the characters and we'll hold auditions for most of the other parts. Um, that to me is the most fun. I, I love the energy with the actors. And I always tell people that uh, what I like to see is no acting, it's just being. Um, if, if any acting is noticeable, it's, it's bad. And, and a child, they'll, they'll play with their G.I. Joe or Barbie and everything, they're, all, they're in the moment. All their senses are, you know, they hear the planes above and the, the bombs going off and they smell, you know. And it's so nice to watch that, like they're so in this world. And of course, as you grow up, you, you, uh, you know, develop all these insecurities and, and uh, body image, you're conscious of all these other things and other people's criticism. And so you start putting these little walls up. Um, and it's funny, actors really just have to strip that all down to, to being that kid, you know, in the moment, believing everything, it's all real. And often now I, um, I watch the tapes, um, but I turn the sound down. And I like to see if they're there, if they're in this place. And you know, you can see it in their eyes. And I also tell these actors to make bold choices because even if they don't get the part, they'll be memorable and we'll bring them back. Um, and I've remembered people from Sex and City that didn't get cast on the show 15, you know, 14 years ago, whatever we started. Um, and I, I find them and I bring them in now because they were so good. And I, I have a pretty good memory, which is uh, pretty important to casting. I do look at resumes and photos and I really look into their eyes. Um, I do some research on what they've done. But agents make their submissions. I know a lot of these actors. I know their work. I follow it. Um, I try to watch demo reels when I can. Um, I, I spend a day every two weeks watching, you know, people keep me informed on what they're doing, the Onion Network or uh, something, you know, and I'll just watch every, um, every clip that's been sent to me and, you know, check out everybody's new reel. And uh, I like to stay up to date with it. And then, and then there's a lot of actors that just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. And, and so, you know, the pool is just huge. I also, I'm very impressed by theater that that's why the thing, what I like more about New York than Los Angeles is, you know, the people here, it's, I, I love to see a theater resume. I'm not impressed if someone's, you know, been on a, mag, a model, on a magazine cover. It's, it's like, that doesn't say anything to me. I mean, now that we're doing commercials too, uh, we're seeing a lot more people that aren't, that I wouldn't really consider actors, you know. I don't care if you're with an agent or a manager or if you're union or non-union. In fact, I tell people to 
stay non-union as long as you can because you could, we could always hire non-union, but sometimes we can't hire more SAG people and it's, it's, it's really interesting. A lot of actors think that that means something on their resume. Ooh, they're union, but it's not that hard to get into. And it's, I'd rather see a larger resume. I'd rather see someone that's built up a reel and has done all these great things, you know, before just thinking, oh, now I'm in the union, you know. But after the auditions, you know, we schedule callbacks, um, sometimes two callbacks, and um, sometimes chemistry reads at that point. And then we um, usually at that point we make start making offers. Um, you know, offers the role, uh, the amount, um, you know, which involves their schedule and, and all the other little things they need. Um, we send out deal memos once the, you know, it's set and then the contracts are usually done through the producers. And then we're good to go. And that can be a little nerve wracking, you know. It's, uh, you think your job is over and it's not. Um, um, or a couple times they've fired the actors, they just, you know, they've given great auditions, but something on set was different, and it's a different art. Auditioning is one thing. You're in a room and it's controlled and you can't do anything large. And then, you know, you can't yell. It looks awkward on camera. You can't do anything physical. And so we'll have this, you know, and the person may have gave a great audition and something that just doesn't work on set. It depends on the sides. I mean, it could be a day player and we try to, sometimes we schedule two people every five minutes. Sometimes for a larger role, you know, it could be 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes it's a half hour for a callback. Um, and it's funny, sometimes though, it's the person I would have never, never expected. I mean, we had an actress that came in and went off on the script and didn't, she didn't even audition. And the director, I just thought like I was embarrassed, and, you know, and the director said, I, I want to hire her. I always tell actors get nervous and I always say, you know what, it's your part for five minutes. Nothing matters before, nothing matters after. Love it. Your, your audience may just be the reader, it may just be the, you know, the camera and whoever's in the room. Um, but but you, gotta, you gotta just love doing that, otherwise, you know, it's, it's, it shows. Um, I always tell people never to apologize, never to cut themselves off, say, sorry, can I start again? Sometimes the flubs are the best part. They're so natural. And they sometimes keep those in the film. You know, they, they've rewritten scripts because the actor, actors, or actor were so funny um, in the flub, you know, was, and, and they end up changing the dialogue because that was just, you know, more natural. You know, as an actor, I had, I had wonderful teachers and, um, and a, and a uh, acting coach, and they would they coach me for auditions. And I remember, she would say, you know, to break up every sentence. Nobody speaks like in a paragraph. It's it's all sorts of ums and errs, and and exactly, just uh, add all that naturalness to it. Um, you know, just get rid of the script. And I've had all these directors recently that say, throw it away, throw it away. It could be. 30, it could be 60. Um, for commercial, it could be hundreds and hundreds. Um, we could see, um, what is that, like 12 an hour? Um, sometimes you overbook and you have 15 actors waiting and that makes me very nervous. I hate to, you know, to waste people's time. Um, and then sometimes the director will want to spend like 20 minutes with one person and then we'll have two minutes with the next, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, that, that happens a lot. They, they're not a, a, as aware of time sometimes as we are. You know, they'll really like this person and everything else will uh, disappear for them. And so they'll just want to spend uh, the day with them. Sometimes the producer is the one most involved with the casting. Okay. Um, and the director seems just to be there for a creative reason, you know, and you know, is gonna direct a movie. Sometimes the director is a producer also. And they're much more hands-on. Um, sometimes it'll be the director and producer together. Um, and I love when they're in tandem and, you know, and they agree on stuff and, but I really like the ones that are there, you know, that come to the auditions, you know, that really care and are excited about it and are warm to the actors. I, I, I you could always kind of tell what, what it's going to be like on set, you know, when you meet them beforehand, um, like how they behave in the audition process and, and sometimes, yeah, it's... It's, it's a mixed bag, we'll say. Sometimes it's a relationship with the agent. 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, I'm not happy with that all the time. I think the best actor should get it, regardless. Um, but sometimes, you know, ugh, there's that. There is um, something now called the diversity clause, um, where you get a tax incentive. Um, if you shoot in New York, if you hire this many minorities. Um, so we've had to uh, take a male character and make it female. We had to take a Caucasian male and make it an Asian male. You know, that's, to, I mean, I mean, in one respect, you know, it makes sense, but on the other, it's, to me, it's very unfair. Um, and so, right, and so it's not always the best actor. And other times you have to yin yang, you know, there's already a blonde in the scene beforehand, you know, and so you're kind of looking for, since you're going right into the next scene, you're looking for a contrast so it's not too similar to the other actress. Um, there's always nepotism. <laughs> now there's a lot of like things that are just, you know, beyond. I like persona, you know, I like charm. I like, um, I like intelligence. Um, I like drive, but not pushiness. Um, you know, I just like to see someone who's well-rounded too, you know? Desperation is, is scary and I feel really bad. I'm very sensitive, you know, towards, you know, the actor's thoughts and I, and I really like to look in the eyes and, and just, you know, see a world of like creativity and imagination and, you know, flexibility. Um, yeah, I already said like what I don't like, you know, desperation, the pushiness, um, um, laziness, I don't, don't really like, you know? When it seems like the day was totally creative, you know? When it wasn't all about your system going down and, and typing deal memos and, and all this kind of clerical stuff, I, I hate it. I like when, I just wish I could just Everything could just be creative and, you know, an assistant would do everything involving computers and paper and, um, you know, and money, you know, just, I just, I really like, like a, day, a great day is like, I, I meet these fascinating actors from around the world and I, I get to work with them and, um, and it, people like thrill me with their talent and their, their work and, and it's, you know, and then I feel like everything is going really well that everybody's happy, the directors, the producers, um, and you know, and I feel like we've, we've made it over that hump. It, always at the beginning you think, oh, it's gonna be impossible, it's gonna be impossible, and then, you know, and then things start falling into place. Should I give it an email address? <laughs> well, I <hope> so. <laughs>